All right, last time we put in our files into our Overleaf project and we had a whole list of different files that we were using. I've now taken out all of the ones that started with a five, all of those actual questions. The reason being we're going to actually write our own questions now. And I've also cleared out in between begin and end questions in our main.tex file. That's looking much slimmer now because all of those questions have been deleted so we don't need to input all of those questions. Okay, now that we're in this particular starting point, what we will do is we will write a question, but instead of writing it directly here, we're going to create a new file. And just because of the convention that I use, uh, look, I, I want a five there because the questions are sort of in the middle of things. They're not right at the start like the preamble. They're not right at the end like the formula sheet and they're somewhere in the middle. That's my, my reasoning behind that. So let's just call this a simple question so you want to give things a fairly reasonable sort of name um, something that's going to be memorable and you'll kind of know what it's all about a couple of years from now that's just a good principle for for naming things so in here we're going to go forward slash input and we are going to find that simple question okay now it's input there, we can actually go and do our writing of the question here. So forward slash question, and perhaps this question is worth 10 marks. Okay, so what is maths? Perhaps that's a really, really nice question, and now we're going to compile. I'm clicking on this PDF button, and I'm going to click the recompile button, and we'll see what we've got so far. we have our question and you can see it's worth 10 marks. So obviously that will show up there. That's somewhere where you can put your mark when you're actually marking the thing later on. And we've got it all tallied up down here. Now, very often when you're doing a maths uh, test, you sort of have parts and subparts and that type of thing. So let's go into parts. We'll begin parts. We will end parts and we will put in let's say three parts so the first part is worth one mark the next part is worth three marks and the part after that is worth four marks let's say and because we're getting our points from the actual parts of the question rather than the whole question I'm going to get rid of that up there So again, we want to compile here. And now when this prints out, you can see that, yeah, we've actually got some parts. We haven't actually put in the text and everything there, but at least we've got some parts there. You can continue this on. Now, I don't know how useful it is actually to have lots and lots of subparts. So it's not something that I regularly do, but just so you can see how it's done. Same sort of idea, but begin and end subparts. Okay, so this subpart is worth one mark, two marks, two marks, whatever. And we'll see how that looks. Okay, and again, as we do this, everything's going to update down below. So, well, it's still 10 10 points so we won't see a difference there okay so that's the basic idea with parts and subparts there might even be sub subparts but I honestly don't know now um, when we have got our actual questions in here we also need to put a bit of space for the students to write so for example here if we want to put in some grid we would begin a solution or grid like that. And let's say that we want 
one inch of that. It's not a very big question. It's going to be simple to answer. We don't want to devote too much space and waste too many trees, so we'll just have about an inch of that. Okay. When I look at that personally, to me it looks like it's a little bit constricted. I want to give my students as much space as possible horizontally to answer their question um, as, as they, I can possibly give them. So I also want to actually begin env, as in environment, full width. Okay, I want to begin env full width and I want to end env full width. And it's a, a fairly minor thing, but I think it's quite important when you're running a maths test to, to have that extra room over there. Okay, so that's what that uh, does. Now, obviously, it's not the sort of thing where you want to be writing it over and over and over again. So normally I have it readily available so that I can copy um, if I need to. Okay, so obviously not everything is one one inch. Maybe that's a two inch space that you need and maybe this is two and a half inches, let's say. Okay, so now, now that actually is taking us, well, it's pushing the grading table onto the next page. All right, so next job, we need to put in a little bit of a more interesting sort of, I don't know, question, let's say. So perhaps we could say something like, let A equal five and B equal minus three. Okay, and then our first question here could be find A plus B. Okay, and I am using these dollar signs here because I'm in maths mode, or at least I want to be in maths mode. Uh, if I didn't have those dollar signs there, then I wouldn't get that beautiful cursive italic A. I would get an upright Roman A and it would be not what I would want. So find A plus B. Now I, I think it's quite a good idea when you're doing this to actually write the solutions concurrently with the actual questions because then you can pick up errors and, and things like that along the way. So um, let's go into maths mode here and say that A plus B equals three plus, sorry, it was five plus, five plus minus three, which is equal to two, like that. So that's another way that you can go into maths mode. You can use displayed maths. Now we won't actually see that right now because we haven't got the answers toggled. So I'm gonna comment and uncomment so that we do see the answers. Otherwise you won't really know, you know, if what you're doing is correct. So that's how you put in maths in that way. Now sometimes we want to line up our equations instead of just having the equation going all the way across. So we could um, Let's put in another question. What would be, maybe let's see how we multiply things. Okay. Um, okay, so we can use the time symbol. Like that. Some people like to use the ascended dot instead. Okay, but I, I happen to like the time symbol and it's so easy to use in LaTeX that why not use it? 
All right, so let's find this one. And, and the goal here is to sort of line up our equations. Okay, so begin, align star, and we will start writing out what we want. So we want 2a times 3b. And I'm going to write and equals instead of just equals. And is saying this is where I want this to line up. So this is 6ab. Okay, now I want to go on to the next line. So double forward slash. Don't use double forward slash willy-nilly throughout your document. It has a very specific usage inside environments. Um, so you don't want to be using that all over the place. That's a trap that a lot of people fall into when they're first learning this. Okay, so 6 times 5 times minus 3. Okay, next line. Okay, so this is 30 minus 90. So, so far what we've seen is we've seen how to put in inline maths using dollar symbols, displayed maths using forward slash open square bracket, forward slash close square bracket for our environment. And here, finally, the, the third most important way of, of learning how to put in equations is using the align environment like that. 